This will be an overview of the ICOM IC271A 2 meter transceiver. You'll notice here that it says all mode, but it does not do AM. So it is not really an all mode, it's a multi mode. It's an almost all mode. It will do, a, it'll do FM, upper sideband, lower sideband, and CW. It was made in the 1980s. Uh, it puts out 25 watts. Uh, this one includes the options of an internal power supply and an internal preamplifier. The transmit and receive is 143.8 to 148.2 megahertz. There's 32 regular memories and two scan edge memories. Uh, going over the uh, radio, here we have the power switch. It'll start up in the in the mode you left it off last time. It, it never starts up in memory mode. It always starts up in VFO mode. This is the transmit receive switch. You can hit that on if you want to talk continuously into the microphone. Uh, you can also do it for uh, CW if you don't want to, if you just want to keep key down during uh, CW. These are the mode selector switches. We have FM, upper sideband, lower sideband, and CW. This is the microphone connector. This is the headphone jack. This is the AF gain control on the outside and the RF gain control on the inside. And you want to keep the RF gain all the way up usually. Here we have squelch. Turn the squelch on and off with the black knob. And tone. Concentric knob, you can hear the difference. Um, now, uh, the black knob here is microphone gain, and on FM, I've been told that it sounds best at about the nine o'clock position. I'm not sure where uh, sideband would be optimal, but uh, nine o'clock appears to be really good for uh, uh, FM, anything higher, and uh, I was told I sounded distorted. Um, then the RF power is the knob behind it from 1 to 25 watts. I forgot what I was going to do next. Oh, this. This is the Vox switch. For, uh, you want to push that in for CW unless you're using the transmit receive switch um, or if you just want to keep on, uh, if you want to use voice operated transmit on uh, on the uh, sideband. It will not work on FM, but I think there's mods on the web on how to uh, make it work on that. This is the noise blanker for ignition noise. This is the AGC or automatic gain control. This uh, uh, meter here, if it's pushed in on FM, the meter will act as a discriminator so you can center the frequency on FM. Uh, this is a preamp. You can see that the needle just went up. This one has the built-in preamp. And this is the mode uh, selector switch. So if you're in CW, but in memory, you have CW and FM and sideband memories, by pushing this in and then go to memory mode, when you hit scan, it will only scan CW because it's on CW right now, which is kind of interesting. This is the offset right switch. Push it in, you notice it changes to 600. This is the check button for checking if you're on duplex, uh, which for some reason this appears to be. Um, it shows you that you can listen on the input. This is the uh, positive duplex on and off. You can see it changing here, positive duplex on and off. This is the negative duplex on and off. You can see it changing. This is the tone switch. Uh, you'll notice it just lit up here. Here, I'll do it again. Um, you have to push that if you're uh, using repeaters. Even if you have everything stored in the memory, you have to push that anyway. Uh, this select switch will show you what the tone setting is. Uh, back then, ICOM used uh, these codes that you can change by holding that in and turning the knob. So this one's on number 12. Number 12 is... 100 hertz tone, and that's very popular around here. Uh, this is the meter. Uh, it uh, is relative output. 
on transmit and uh, it's a single strength or S meter on receive or if you have the discriminator button pushed in uh, it will show you the center of the FM frequency. This is the tuning control. It will change the frequency in a memory mode. It's the only way to change memories. This is the dialog switch. So you can push that in and the, the uh, frequency won't change. This is a tuning step switch. If you push that in while you're in upper sideband or CW, it zeroes out the uh, digit on the right for faster tuning. Now I'll release it. You can see that digit on the right turns. This is the uh, dial function select switch. If you push this in while you're in VFO mode, you can change the memory net uh, channel number up here uh, with the big dial and uh, the frequency does not change in VFO. This is the split switch. If you press that in, you can transmit and receive on two different frequencies using the VFO A and the VFO B. Uh, and it does have two VFOs. This is the megahertz up and down switch. You can see here that it's changing up and and down. So this changes in one megahertz increments for faster uh, tuning. This is the RIT control, receive incremental transmit. This turns it on and you can see there's a new display here. You can turn it to the plus side or to the minus side. It'll go up to a maximum of 9.9 .9 hertz. This clears it. See it went to zero and this turns it off. This chooses between VFO A and B. This equalizes VFO A and B. If you hold it in, they're the same. This is the scan button. It works in the VFO or in the memories. This will write um, a frequency from a memory to the VFO. So let's say you're in a, you know, on a memory and you want to tune around that area of the band. Push that. It'll go to the VFO, uh, transfer it to the VFO. Then you hit the VFO slash memory switch. This is for writing uh, to the memories. Uh, and this switches between VFO and memory. Sorry for the jump there. I was wondering why that display went blank. That's because I had accidentally pushed in the, uh, the mode S switch uh, and it was on sideband. And uh, so it wasn't showing any of the, uh, of the memories because the memories on this one are all in the uh, FM. Um, so moving along, this is the uh, display. It will show the uh, frequency the uh, offset, the memories, and uh, I think that's it. This is the transmit light, transmit light indicator. This is the receive indicator. You can see that just lit up because I turned down the uh, squelch. And this is the tone. I've got to push this button to get the tone light to come on, which as I mentioned before, you have to have on for uh, uh, doing any kind of uh, rip repeater work because everything requires a tone now. Uh, under the hood here, there's a little door. There are some adjustments you can make uh, through the top. Uh, you can do the CW delay, the Vox delay, Vox gain, anti-Vox, and CW uh, monitor. That's uh, like the tone. Uh, it will, this will not do full break in on uh, CW, but you can turn that uh, down and get it uh, almost all the way down uh, to full break in, but it, would, it definitely won't do full break in or QSK on CW. Moving on to the back of the radio, here you have the antenna connector, the ground connector, the CW key jack, the accessory socket jack, um, the external speaker jack, and here we have the built-in power supply, which is going into the uh, DC socket. Now this accessory socket doesn't look like anything I've ever seen before and probably a previous owner didn't know where to find anything for it either. So he put on some interesting mods on here. One of which is this BNC connector which parallels the uh, SO239. So you can use that instead of this. There's two 13.8 volt uh, jacks that were added on and this is a relay for keying a, uh, an amplifier, which you would have had to have done through this, but this makes it uh, much easier. Um, you can uh, key uh, an amplifier that way, and I've done that. Now, if you're on um, 
FM, um, the amplifier will always be on. But let's say you're on a, a sideband and you don't want to hear the, the amplifier clicking on and off when you're uh, taking a breath. Uh, just holding the microphone open, this will keep the uh, amplifier uh, turned on. And um, that way you don't have to listen to it clicking back and forth. Now we're going to go uh, under the hood. Let's back this up a little bit. Um, this is the uh, under the top cover. Um, this is the optional preamp unit that's been installed. Uh, this empty spot here would be for an optional voice synthesizer unit, which would announce the uh, frequency if you so desired. And then uh, this is just the rest of the uh, of the radio. And I'll switch it around show you the back. This is uh, the internal power supply. That uh, that's a nice option. And this was a mystery when I uh, first got this radio. I actually asked a friend of mine who does a lot of uh, VHF and microwave work what he thought that was. I sent him a picture. And he thought it was a battery backup for the memory. And indeed the wiring goes over here to the RAM unit for the memory. You can actually see there's an old ICOM battery there that must have been bypassed. And th this thing works great. I've had it uh, um, unplugged for months at a time and plugged it back in and the uh, uh, memories have all uh, have all been there. Um, and the thing that would have gone there, let me look at my uh, thing there, uh, there was a uh, room for an optional encoder decoder unit uh, in that space. And also, sometimes you could get an op uh, optional interface unit, I think, towards the back for computer control. And some of these actually came with that stock. They're kind of rare, but I've seen pictures of them. So there, there was room there for some other uh, options, but somebody put that in there for, uh, for memory backup, and it does a really good job. I'm trying to learn too much about... Uh, Here it is, all back together. And there's a little QSO going on on one of the local uh, repeaters. A few things here and there, but uh, it's not something that I'm going to get too huge into. But uh, having the hardware available that, and being able to ask... So once again, to change uh, memories, you just turn the dial and it goes through the memories. You can see the frequency changing. And the memory is kind of dim, but it's over there. It's in red. And uh, At, uh, I'll, yeah. key, I'll key one up that's right in the, right in the neighborhood here. Um, let's see here. So it's got good audio. There is a little bit of a, eh, like a whistle on it on the uh, tail of the repeater. Seems to be normal for this. But uh, overall, it's a great radio. Nice performing radio. I get good audio reports with it and uh, puts out well. And I even received a, uh, a repeater. I used that discriminator one night. I got, heard a repeater, a French Canadian repeater. I'm in northern Vermont. I heard a French Canadian repeater on one night and uh, centered it and uh, I figured out what the tone was from uh, an ICOM HT that I have that will uh, find the tone and I was able to program it in and uh, key it up with uh, I had to use the amplifier though but it had really good received it picked it up uh, from uh, I don't even know how many miles probably 70 miles away but it's a nice overall radio it's the ICOM IC271A